uh, hello. Welcome to the show. Uh, we are talking with Sarah Clark, who um, Sarah. Hello. Uh, uh, if if you're able to see this on YouTube, check it out. Um, it was a beautiful conversation with two beautiful women, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I didn't step into that much because you guys were you guys were getting along just fine without me. Um, <laughs> but I am I am grateful to talk to you. Sarah is in Grenada, um, which is part of the West Indies, Caribbean. Is that yes. where you are? Yes, yes, yes. It's close uh, to Trinidad and Tobago and close to Venezuela at the same time. We're kind of just crazy. floating that is in, a, in between. That's a wild part of the world. And in, in that, right? it's, it's I, I'm not that familiar with it. We Where did we go, hon? We went to... Uh, we've been to Anguilla. Anguilla. Um, yeah. And we've been to uh, Turks and Caicos. Yeah, it's, mm. it's beautiful. I mean, just talk about peaceful. And I know. Uh, the sand and the water is is magical. So your journey, yes. I'll just recap a little bit. Um, you were a, a very successful model in New York, which I just wanted to let you know that you left 18 million people uh, in 2020 to live on an island with 118,000 people. <laughs> so you reduced your population quite a bit. Quite um, a bit. And you left a career um, uh, that... Uh, it was high pressure and you were uh, saying no to a lot of yes opportunities. You were doing mm -hmm. some contrary behavior. You are a traveler. Um, mm -hmm. And if I, if I got it right during the conversation, your father's passing also was a catalyst for this detachment um, from the life you had led. Uh, and, and COVID, yeah, yeah. It, it seemed like it, it, it sounded to me like it. I mean, I, I've said before, and I don't say it often, but I, I think he put me here on this mm. island. I really do. Right. Yeah. I think he was like, this is where Sarah needs to be. Go. Uh huh. Yeah, um, for sure. It, it's beautiful. I mean, you the, the story you told of his passing with your hand on his chest, I think, is everybody needs to hear that story. Um, um, so tune in to the episode and check it out. But mm -hmm. um, right around the time of uh, COVID, you end up traveling to Grenada. Um, yeah. And through a series of uh, indications from the universe, we'll call it, you decided to stay. Um, yes. And you, along with saying no to these uh, very uh, lucrative, high attention opportunities, um, yes. you uh, simplified your life and you've been there over three years now. And Almost three. Yeah. Almost three, yeah. Almost um, three, yes. It, it sounds, I, I have to tell you that through COVID, I think that one of the things that happened is that we found out the cities were really crowded and, and very difficult and expensive to live in. And I think a lot of us fantasized. I know I did. In fact, I spent a lot of time in Mexico and I'm very mm -hmm. familiar with people who teach yoga and meditation and travel the world going from retreat area to retreat area. You know, I know there's, yeah. uh, uh, um, there are places on the earth that are conductive to those types of activities. People gather there uh, and are yes. drawn there. Um, and so um, I guess my first real question is, you know, you talked a little bit about intuitiveness and, and, and I like to think that intuitiveness is spirit. It's the place it's, it's, it's the piece in me that knows what I should do. And then my instinct is what I've learned in the world. And as an adult, I'm unlearning a lot of my instinct to trust my intuition. And so I would love for you to talk a little bit about that in your journey and how that intuition has become a, a, a louder voice in your decision making. Wow. <laughs> you know, I wish I could, you know, I think it started, it, it's always been there. Mm -hmm. There's always been a voice in all of us. And I think as children, my take is we're closer to spirit and it's kind of taken out of us as we get into school and, you know, learn how to sit and be quiet. Yeah. I think socialization um, unteaches because a lot of things that we want to do intuitively, I think of babies and how just a, a small baby is just so naturally giving and loving for the most part. And then they're taught that that is not the way the world works. Yes. Right. And, for, and so we're all kind of, unwired and at a very early before we can even consciously dictate yeah. that. But um, through, through exactly. yoga and meditation, you're finding, and a lot of people in this world are finding ways back to trust that intuitiveness. To trust that. And, you know, it's a, I say to those I work with, they're really my students. I hate, I don't like calling the people I teach my students because I, I, I learn from them and I'm just sharing. Right. 
And, mm. um, but I, it's a, I always say it's a small voice in the beginning and it's the voice that we're not trained to listen to. We're used to listening to the louder critic, the inner critic voice or the critical mm. voice. Um, and so I always tell people, begin asking your intuition to speak a little louder because you want to hear it. You want to develop a relationship with it. Like and it's that. connected to our nervous system. It's connected to our gut intelligence. It's connected to the heart wisdom. So it's all this, it's a system that's running through us. It's not just like this woo woo spiritual thing. It's, 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 it's in us to help guide us. And well, if we you know, can begin to trust hear people, it. I often hear people say, oh, I know in my gut, you know, my heart, yeah. told me. you know, like, yes. like there's a, there's sort of a characterization of, of a signal that we give voice to. But mm -hmm. it's it typically is in retrospect of some error that 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 maybe instinct has led us to. Yes, or we we don't again we don't listen to that mm. that inner voice. Um, we go we go against it. Right. You know, it might say turn left today, and we're like, ah, I'm going my usual route, and then you know we <laughs> get stuck in an accident. Not we don't get hopefully we don't get in the accident, but you know, but but it's 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 even practicing on a small scale, you know, of what do I need to do right now. And right now and, and, and becoming your own best friend. Mm, and it, like that. you were saying, Scott, it's like the unlearning to relearn how mm. this life really works because you can be, I think there's different realms. So you can be in the realm of, of the hustle and bustle and the hustle culture, or you can be in the realm of spirit. You can be in the realm of nature. Um, mm. And I like to be in the realm of nature and looking to nature for the answers. You know, nature is never, uh, consistently going like well, let's say winter is a, is a time for nature to chill out right to regroup reevaluate and we're not doing that in in the human world we're not and no. i think that causes a lot of 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 issues mm -hmm. and a so we can begin com, a lot of conflict between sort of the like the, like the human condition might sort of need that regulation from uh, the outside source from sun, from, from time and, and light and versus in darkness, but yeah. in artificial environments, we extract that ability to have that natural, uh, schedule and we become slaves to the eight o'clock, five o'clock, nine o'clock, yes. six o'clock schedule. And, yeah. uh, we don't trust the internal. I love the vision of you sitting in the backyard, um, <laughs> trying to talk to hummingbirds, um, and, and, I mean, to me, that yes. is, it's an absolute, yes. an absolute display. I mean, if you guys listen, there's a number, her grandma, this is a passed down, yeah. uh, intuitive and my thing, mom too. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Of, of trying to sort of, um, I don't know, communicate, I guess, in a, in a strange mm -hmm. form with anything that is passing any animal. You, you say you have a special relationship with some doves, some hummingbirds, yeah. chipmunk yeah. for your first what, what yeah, was that was my first experience <laughs> of like these little things that are super fast. Like I want to train them. I want to pet one. I was, uh -huh. you know, my teens and yeah, I just, I, I had some, I was like home for the summer and yeah, I, I slowly began like we, my, you know, my parents were supportive of this. They, they bought shelled peanuts and, you know, we'd put them yeah. outside and I would sit close and then slowly, but surely I would get closer and closer until they had no choice. But to eat out of my hand because they knew I wasn't going to hurt them. At a they, point. Yeah, they they you saw know? it was they saw it was in, <laughs> it, it was part of who you were, and they they really want you know. Yeah, but I mean, I think totally, and and isn't that a part of intuition? Of you get this download, like I want to train these wild animals. I don't know why, but I do. And then mm -hmm. within that, all these beautiful lessons that unfold while communing with nature that reminds you that what you're desiring is within you for a reason. Right. And so even if you're in the hustle and bustle and yet you can't figure out how to get out, how can you do things on a smaller level? Like even how food feels as you eat it, is it serving you or not? Um, how do, how does your breath shift depending on the situation you're in or the people that you're around? How mm -hmm. can you regulate your breath to calm your nervous system? And when we get more into a rest and digest state, that's when wisdom can flow even more um, abundantly and, and clearly through us to help us get stronger. It's building a muscle. It's building a muscle. Right. It, it's mm -hmm. gorgeous. I mean, I think, and, and you know, the last thing I think I wanted to touch base on what I think is interesting to me is that because you know, in traveling the world and, 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 you know, the places I go and I see these communities of mindfulness instructors and yoga instructors, I'm, it's very rare that I see people of color who are a part of this community. Yep. 
And why don't, first of all, I'll just ask you, because this is something that, that you've decided is important is to represent this. Why, why do you think that that is? Why is there less representation in that circle? I mean, it's known as, you know, the, the little white girl with a yoga mat kind of gig is what people say. But why, why is there that imbalance? And, um, you know, I know you're changing it by being a representative and being in the face of that. Um, but is it, is it going to change? Is it, is it growing as we speak? <laughs> I mean, is racism ever going to change, you know, yeah, yeah. or I mean, are we going to create... A, is, is it a cultural thing, like, to not seek a spiritual solution for living or to expand that part of your life, or is it because well, there there isn't language for it yet, or... No, there's, I mean, th this is a big topic. This is a mm. major topic. Um, these spirit, these practices are indigenous. Sure. You know, so they come from 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 us uh and like so many things they are exploited and they're packaged beautifully and they're sold to a specific demographic yeah and some have access and some don't and when you don't see yourself represented then you might feel like that's not for me and that is why representation is so powerful and it can be deliberate like me being a part of a yoga apparel brand that's like we're all about inclusion and then when I get there I'm like no you're not but my face has pulled in I see a lot now a lot of um yoga teachers are now a part of this brand from seeing a woman like me associated with the brand so representation is deliberate it can be manipulated it's yeah. powerful it's changing and because of social media i realized i was never the only one in the room as a as a black yoga teacher we're just not showcased the way let's say the skinny white girl right is. Yeah, yeah, yeah and we're working on changing that just through social media and being able to create our own spaces it it it's it's i feel like it's important just because even being represented as by, by the dominant culture, um, I find it to be a little bit like hands off. Like Laura and I always say my true comfort space is diversity and, and in all rooms. Like I, I enjoy a diverse crowd of people in a room. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I'm always like I surf too. And the same thing is true in surfing. There's not a lot of people of color surfing. And, um, you know, it sets up a dynamic that is is – uh, challenging and and it feels uncomfortable and it feels it feels wrong you know well it's elite you know it's, a, yeah. it's an elite sport and when you trace back even surfboards you can find wooden surfboards made in in africa you know mm -hmm. but it's again it's it's excluding certain people so it's not that there aren't black people surfing it's just you, you don't you don't see them represented in let's say costa rica and other mm -hmm. places but there's a man i can't remember his name is selma so i can't think of his name but he's making waves in the surfing community. Salima, I think is his first name. Okay. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's just about us coming together and saying we're here too. Yeah. 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 I think it's really important. I love that you're um, hanging on to the things that uh, your, in, your instinct has brought you, the opportunities yeah. uh, that, and, and using them to uh, bring up the things that are truly your ambition, your deeper uh, per sense of purpose and trying to mm. combine those. I was thinking when you guys were talking about a book that like a, a person of color who had an eat, pray, love kind of book, like a, a, a spiritual journey, if you will, mm -hmm. um, sounds kind of where you're at. You know, I think the love piece you talked about in, in, in the interview would oh, complete gosh, the yeah. chapter, but I right. Think, yeah. And she falls in love and lives um, happily ever after, exactly. but we need more of these stories. Right. We need more of these stories because they're out there. I'm not the only one no. as a black woman living abroad, having this experience. Yeah. It's yeah, great. Yeah. And thank you for taking time and coming on the show. You guys check out the episode. Pleasure. It's fantastic. Um, and check out Sarah on Instagram. She has a fantastic Instagram it's beautiful. Uh, presence. Thank you, and, Scott and Laura. Yeah, thank you so much, Chef. <laughs> A pleasure.